above the Supreme Military Council. I, the people running Nigeria have come and gone my quite quickly own. since independence, but the time of the circumstance seldom changes, and so it was at the swearing-in ceremony in Lagos. Sixteen military Republic governors were sworn into power on Wednesday. They read their oaths of allegiance to the man who led the New Year's Eve bloodless coup, the chairman of the new Supreme Military Council, Major General Mohamed Buhari. Approve your appointments as military governors for the 19th states of the Federation. General Buhari reminded Nigeria's new rulers of their assignment obligations is based and his aim to regain international credibility for the country. The One of the council's the first acts was council to give armed citizens two weeks to surrender unlicensed firearms and ammunition or face ten years imprisonment of the with Republic hard labor. Nigeria, Lagos Airport was reopened, fear, telephone and telex fever, links with the outside world were re-established and the country's dust to dawn curfew lifted. The conduct of the 1983 elections that's that hope, since as I said before on another occasion, that election could be anything but free and fair. The Nigerian people were, therefore, limbered with a government whose suspect massive victory at the polls lulled it into a state of complacency. The planless, downright incompetence and irresponsibility which characterized the previous four years continued. Gentlemen of the press, the Nigerian armed forces could not stand idly by while this country was drifting towards a dangerous state of political and economic collapse through the continued ineptitude and insensitiveness of a political leadership who were apparently unwilling to change. It had a duty to intervene to clean up the economic mess and set this country once again on the path of sanity. On OPEC, we have to be quick to say so because there are other member countries who try to cause confusion in the oil market by speculating that we are going to panic and uh, start uh, selling oil uh, uh, at cheap. We are in OPEC and even if we are going to change our opinion about OPEC, we are going to consult them. This is what we said. Stop corruption was the military's slogan when it seized power in Nigeria. It's had some initial success. Roadblocks like these used to be manned by policemen, more interested in bribes than fines. But the corruption which flourished under the civilian government starts right at the top. Arsonists tried to burn down this Nigerian equivalent of the post office tower to try and cover up an alleged fraud. Two government ministries were also burned down in suspicious circumstances. Ordinary Nigerians are understandably convinced that anything which goes wrong in their country is because of corruption. In the sprawling slums of Lagos, the people welcome the coup because they know the wealthy spend millions of pounds on houses here and abroad. Some members of the civilian government are said to have banked tens, perhaps hundreds of millions of pounds abroad. Businessmen pay anything from a tenth to a third to middlemen on contracts worth billions. But it's one thing to criticize corruption in Nigeria, another thing to stamp it out. The last military government banned a number of luxury goods more than seven years ago, including champagne. But if you've got 45 pounds... In the markets, the army is trying to combat what it considers corruption. They're tooling stalls around the country, telling shopkeepers to charge less. But economics, like Nigerians, respond badly to threats from soldiers. Have the soldiers told you to bring your prices down? Uh, they've said it, you know. But then, we cannot sell below the cost price, you know. That's the reason. It is when we finish the ones in stock now, then when we bring new ones, we have to adjust. I mean, if we get it cheaper, then we have to sell it cheaper to the customers. The Nigerian press reports daily on new frauds coming to light by the previous civilian government. This warehouse, belonging to a Lebanese businessman, contained almost half a million bags of rice, destined for a special presidential program to help the needy. But this military government has an added incentive to tackle corruption. If it doesn't, a restless junior officer corps may just take its place.